All right, guys, so we just finished up talking about everyday carry knives in my collection, but of course, as you guys know, I'm involved in the outdoor life and scene, so I have quite a few outdoor blades as well to go over. So most of these, pretty much all of them are fixed blades, and of course, maybe I'll do a video talking about multi-tools as well, because I do tend to use more multi-tools in the wilderness, but these are going to be my wilderness fixed blades and most of my wilderness collection or wilderness knives collection. So... As you guys probably know from the channel, I am moving more towards everyday carry knives. So I've pared down this collection. It used to be quite massive, but I've pared it down quite a bit to accommodate for more everyday carry knives. So I'm using those more and tend to uh, carry them and realistically use them just more frequently. So as always guys, if you want to see more videos like this and see more knives, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, the Instagram, ring the notification bell, and now let's jump into it. Okay guys, so we have quite a few knives to go over and I think we're gonna approach this as we did similarly in the last video where I'm not gonna be going necessarily over price or size or anything like that. I'm gonna try to just clump them up to brands. Now I will say when it comes to outdoor knives, especially because I've sold off a lot of knives, uh, I don't have as many brands like homologated as much, but I do have a few. So we're just gonna go over the knives that, you know, by brand. So that's how we're gonna do it. Okay, so first one up is going to be the Buck Thug. Now this is a long since discontinued knife and it is a part of my collection, even though it doesn't see too, too much use, I really do enjoy using this knife and it still does see quite a bit of use because it is a bigger blade and I love this recurve. It is very capable. It is a real kind of multi-use blade. And so this one is made out of 5160 tool steel and this one was designed by Ron Hood of Hood's Woods. And uh, this is just a great blade. I really do kind of wish that I could have gotten more of the the punk and the hoodlum. They were kind of all released together, the thug, the punk, and the hoodlum. And what a lot of people don't actually realize is that these were made by Tops for Buck. So these knives were actually kind of, they were officially branded by Buck and I'm still counting this as a Buck knife, even though I have Tops knives as well, but uh, it was technically made by Tops and it is a really really well put together blade. The hoodlum did have some issues and the punk was really fantastic. It just never really caught on unfortunately. Okay, next one up, and one that's quite ubiquitous with the channel, if you've been around for any time at all, is my good old Chris Reed Knives, or CRK Pacific. Now, I do have quite a few folders from CRK, but I also have this Pacific, and this is one of my go-to fixed blades. And honestly, one of the reasons why I end up selling or sold a lot of my other fixed blades is because this blade just really does so much for me. It's pretty good for bushcrafting, not perfect, but it is darn near, in my opinion, the perfect bushcrafting or sorry, survival knife, and it in that way has seen a lot of use and a lot of carry time. In addition to, I also have this set up for survival, so I have a Leatherman Surge multi-tool right here, and of course I have a nice thick, chunky ferro rod on it. So this is a pretty well-rounded survival setup and for as far as a blade goes, and uh, yeah, it is just a fantastic blade. Absolutely cannot say enough good about CRK Pacific. They are very hard to find and they are not cheap, but they are really good. So now some more kind of singular knife makers or singular brands. I have the Falcon Even A1. The A1 is just such a great, well-rounded blade and I have contemplated and listed this one for sale, but for now it is still in my collection and I still really do like the A1. The only reason I would actually part with the A1 is just because I have the Pacific and I have the SE6 and I feel like the A1 is just so similar to both of them and they're all great knives, but I end up choosing either the SE6 or the Pacific almost every time because I just like using them a little bit more than the A1. The A1 in and of itself is a fantastic outdoor blade and I have uh, said a lot of great things about it before. It is definitely worth picking up especially because of its stainlessness. Um, I really do like the blade. Okay. Now let's go over to Cold Steel and the kind of look-alike or ultimately the kind of predecessor for the Falcon Even A1. This is the Cold Steel SRK full-sized and SK5 high carbon steel. A lot of people criticize me. They say this is, knife isn't very strong and maybe for extreme applications it isn't, but for any realistic use in survival, uh, the SRK is a very strong blade. I really do like it and uh, you know, a lot of people will talk trash on it, but that's okay by me. I still really like it. Moving over to tops. 
we have the Topps Fieldcraft, and this is the only one that I've retained of Topps. I do like my MS, or I did like my MSK and my Topps Tom Brown Tracker, but realistically, I just wasn't using them. So this Topps Fieldcraft is a great blade. I do really love it, and I've had it for many years. It was one of my kind of initial bushcrafting knives when I was starting to get more into bushcrafting. I bought, you know, more a clipper, and then I went and graduated pretty much to the Topps Fieldcraft. So it has a lot of history with me and that's why I've kept it is because I know the blade so well and it is very capable in and of itself. Next up on the list, we're going to go with the Spyderco, and this is the Spyderco North Fork. Now, this guy, I pretty much use dedicated for more hunting and uh, those related tasks, and it's definitely not the best, but this is the Blade HQ exclusive with this kind of coloration of the G10, and it is actually a really cool little camp blade, food prep blade, and uh, it's surprisingly for what it is, like for the cost of it, it's only like a $30 knife, but it looks super high quality, and it is just a very pretty and very useful knife, very reminiscent of the kind of sharp fingers of the times past and uh, it has a mirror polished blade really beautiful phil wilson design <clears throat> Okay, moving into some of the last independent like uh, knives that I only have one of from brands, the LT Wright Lego. Now, this is one that as I've been releasing or kind of letting go of bushcrafting knives and outdoor knives, so many people have asked, you know, are you going to sell your Lego? I'll buy your Lego. People have been asking or offering me lots of money for this knife, and I really just cannot let this knife go. Maybe for like some absurd amount of money, like 700 bucks or something crazy, I would let this thing go, but for me probably not because of what this knife is. It's not necessarily the most profound bushcrafting knife, but it's ties to Morse Kohansky or Kochansky. Morse Kohansky and the fact that this blade, uh, albeit I blued my, my steel, but as far as the like orange G10 handles go, this is the configuration that Moore's had. And so if you've been in the bushcrafting field for a while, you'll likely have heard of Moore's Kohansky and what he did for bushcrafting and kind of how he was the face and the name of bushcrafting and Karamat Wilderness Ways. Uh, and so he lended his hand quite a bit to the design and development of this knife. So for me, this is really more of like kind of a heritage knife in that regard. And I really like it because this one is the one that Moore's or very similarly, uh, this is the same configuration that Morris had. And these guys, while these are not terribly expensive knives, are actually pretty hard to come by because they do very limited drops of them and you can only buy them through Ben's Backwoods. So it's exclusivity and it's history makes it very desirable. I know a lot of people would buy that knife for me in a heartbeat, but I really can't let it go. Not to mention it is just a really, really good bushcrafting blade. I mean, there's a lot of really good bushcrafting blades here. So it's kind of on equal with a lot of these, but it is in and of itself a fantastic user. Okay, last one up is the JBK Layman. Now this one, like my, uh, like my Legome is probably one of the more perfect blades for bushcrafting and just general wilderness use. As you guys can see, this guy is definitely a bit of a user and I should say that I have not been doing a great job for uh, steels, but so I think I'm just gonna let it go. But this one uses 8670 uh, tool steel, so it's not the most corrosion resistant as you guys can tell, but it is a fantastic blade. And for me, I really like this one for game processing and general wilderness prep. So this one, uh, because of that and because I really love the tapered tang on this and just the overall design and build on this knife is just gorgeous. I really love this knife and the ergonomics are like so on point. I just love the heck out of this blade. So for those reasons, it is one of my top knives and is one of my favorite bushcrafting knives overall. And yeah, it's just a fantastic knife. Okay, so let's jump over to Mora's. So the Mora's that I have left are my Mora Conspool. Now this is an orange handled version. I really do love, love the Conspool. I like its ergonomics, even though it is very similar to the Garberg. It is very fantastic and very well, very usable in my opinion. 
Next up on the list is going to be the Mora Clipper. This is one that I actually semi-recently did a video on talking about, and I was surprised at the amount of people that knew and loved their Mora Clippers, but really the Mora Clipper for me, it's not, a, it, it, it's not an expensive knife. They're actually still very cheap and very readily available uh, out there, even though they're no longer being made. But the Clipper was really what put Mora kind of on the map and led to the Mora Companion, which I actually have several companions. I just forgot to bring them because uh, they're in places, uh, they're in like different packs and stuff. But I do have multiple more companions, but the Clipper is kind of uh, the predecessor to them. Next up on the list is the Mora Bushcraft Black, and I really do like this knife very much like the Conspool. It's just a little bit more robust, heavy duty, and a great general purpose knife overall for wilderness use, and uh, that's why it's in the collection. Last one up, and I think the only like small neck knife in my collection still is the Mora Eldris. This guy for me was just such a perfect little uh, neck knife, so I had to keep it in the collection, and I have to uh, have one because they are really cool. Not to mention, too, they were also a gift from a fellow YouTuber that was based out of Anchorage. He has since relocated, but uh, his name was Sweet Costa Rica. He gifted me that blade and a couple, or he gave me a couple, uh, he gave me a couple Eldresses, or Eldresai, if you will, and uh, he gave me a silky big boy. So really cool guy, really down to earth, awesome YouTuber. He still makes some stuff. He's just in a different state, but uh, yeah. So that is the Red Eldris. Okay. Almost forgot this guy. This is one of technically the, I technically, so this is one of, so this is pretty much one of my only condors. I do have a Bushcraft Parang machete, ironically too, now that I think about it. But uh, this is a condor pterosaur, and I really do like the pterosaur. This is one of my favorite blades. I've mentioned in the past before about how this is one of my go-tos for training people because it's a very cheap and expensive, but very effective blade, and it comes in 1095 high carbon. So this guy is in the collection and it is such a cool blade. Definitely not going anywhere because it is one of my go-to wilderness blades and a blade that I love to uh, teach bushcrafting and survival skills with. Next up on the list, I'm gonna go over the Essies. So I used to have a lot of Essies. I since have parted with a lot of them. And personally, in my opinion, Essies are fantastic knives. I totally recommend them. I just had so many Essies, I was not using all of them. And of course, different sizes work better for different people. So the only two that I have left are my SE3. And I love the SE3 uh, because it is a perfect size for me in a lot of my applications. This is one of my go-to neck knives. Uh, for right and proper and just honestly such a capable multi-role blade but also too i like the history and heritage of the blade i got it from a like moving sale when knives ship free were moving to escanaba michigan they were kind of having like a blowout sale so i got the blade for super cheap and uh, it's just been a fantastic knife ever since Next one up is, of course, the SE6. So, like I said, this is one of my go-tos up there with my Pacific and the Falkneven A1. This is one of those blades that just handles everything very well. One thing I will say I did do to this blade is I did lay back that edge to 17 degrees. So you'll notice that it probably has a bit wider bevel than you'd expect. And this thing is so slicey. It's so sharp. I also flattened the spine to make it better for striking ferro rods. This knife is just great. And I have it set up for scout style carry. It's just an awesome blade overall. Okay, now moving on to and closing out this uh, list is going to be my Bark River knives. I have three of them. I've had a few Bark Rivers in my time, but the first one up is the Aurora. Now this one is uh, similar to the original Aurora that I had. I got an Aurora uh, pretty early on with my bushcrafting. I think after I bushcraft for about like two and a half years, I went from my Topps Fieldcraft over to an Aurora. Unfortunately, it was reasonably short-lived because uh, the Aurora tips are not the strongest. You'd have to be mindful, especially in A2 tool steel like this guy is. But I don't, I don't tend to use my Aurora too often, but I do like it. And I will say the Aurora, much like many Bark River knives, it just has absolutely perfect ergonomics like they are so comfortable to use to hold for hours and uh, yeah it's so hard to go wrong with uh, bark barkies they're not cheap but they are pretty darn well built next one is my all-time kind of uh, goat if you will or greatest of all time bushcrafting knife and that is the bark river knives bushcrafter this one's in cpm 3b and uh, this knife 
I, I don't really know how I can put it. Obviously, I'm not going to sell it ever because uh, I actually had one that I sold similar to my Aurora and regretted it not long after. So I ended up picking up another Bark River Knives uh, Bushcrafter and these guys in CPM3 3v are so tanky so durable they hold an edge very well and uh, gosh there's really nothing i can't do with a bush crafter uh, from bark river these just are my absolute go-to and one of the reasons why i sold off so many of my outdoor blades is because my bush crafter is just one that like if i don't know where i'm going or what exactly i'm doing or you know if i need just a well-rounded blade the bush crafter is going to be a pick 100 percent of the time Okay, next one up, and one that is pretty similar to the Bushcrafter, though I have not had as long, is the Bark River Knives uh, Bravo 1. Now, the Bravo 1 is another great knife with a nice storied history. I haven't had a Bravo 1 for, or I haven't had this Bravo 1 for too long, and honestly, uh, for the most part, I really didn't uh, like the Bravo 1 until I actually owned this guy and uh, carried it for a little bit, and its thickness was initially very detracting to me but it's grown on me and it has such a long uh such a wide blade that the convex grind is very tapered and is just really nice and it's actually quite a comfortable blade quite a robust and heavy duty blade but just very nice so this is the bravo one and probably the newest uh, addition to this list though i really haven't bought any bush crafting or outdoor knives in a few months so anyways that is, anyways, that is the Bark River Bravo one. And this is the last one up on the list. So that's pretty much all of my outdoor knives. Um, once again, you know, I tend not to use my outdoor knives as much. So that's why I pared so many of them down over the years. But, uh, or like over the past few months, I've gotten, ready, gotten rid of so many because I had so many, just wasn't really using any of them. So, or wasn't really using as many as I had. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at the collection and hopefully enjoyed seeing uh, what outdoor or wilderness blades I got. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless, and I'm out.